Now, Leonard Sweet's encouragement in this chapter of his book is really very simple. We need to, at times, be patrons like Lydia when we can. At other times, we need to allow ourselves to be humble beggars, like the poor man Lazarus, and be served when we are in need. He points out that it's frequently easier to give than it is to receive, to serve than to be served. And we need to be in relationship with those who are patrons, those who invite us to come for a meal and rest and be refreshed. And we need to be in relationship with those who are in need. We are required to walk humbly with others who need us. I will never forget after I left here to minister with the people at the San Marino Congregational United Church of Christ. Just a few months after I was the minister there, a man walked into the office and asked to see the pastor. We sat down to talk. He said, I need help. I need help to make myself ready to live without a home. And so I listened. As he continued his story, I learned that he and his wife had, be, had been public school educators. They had no children and their parents had died within the last several years. During their recent history, his wife had been diagnosed with a very slow but life-ending form of cancer. She went through treatment, but over the years her insurance was canceled, so they sold their home and rented. He lost his job because he needed to have time to take care of her. Eventually, she died. A member of the congregation and I took him to get a sleeping bag and a few other items. The only thing that we asked of him was that he come by regularly to ch check in with me and with the congregation. Well, as life happens, eventually he moved on to other areas. We lost touch. But I think of this man often. When I am at Union Station Family Shelter where we serve a meal for families on Sunday evenings, I remember that each person has a story. There, we are allowed, once all have been served, to serve ourselves and to sit down and visit with the people who are sheltered there. By doing that, we not only show them that we eat and enjoy the food that we serve them, but that we are interested in their lives. We are in relationship. In my life now as being somewhat newly widowed, or single as some people call me, after 42 years and one month of marriage, I am most appreciative of the couples who still call me and invite me to go places with them. One couple calls every time they're headed out to a British pub for dinner, a place where my partner John and I used to go with them. Many people do not know what to do with newly widowed or divorced people, except to put them in a box, a box that says, well, they no longer belong in these groups anymore. In today's times, the struggles seem to be getting greater. I have two sets of friends who have needed to put off surgery for cancer because they cannot afford to pay the deductibles on their health care until they become of Medicare age. And we know what waiting for that kind of situation can do to someone's health. This sounds like politics, doesn't it? Well, you know, Jesus was reversing, turning things topsy-turvy during his time. It's actually more about doing justice, loving kindness, and walking humbly with our God. It's about doing to others as we would have them do to us. 
Jesus, and later Paul, modeled for their followers the humbleness of allowing others to serve them. They modeled the humbleness of walking alongside of all kinds of people. They modeled the humbleness of enduring imprisonment, like the least of these are brothers and sisters, and being executed also, like the least of these are brothers and sisters. And remember, they both became the hosts with the mostest by celebrating with all people, all people who were willing to come to the table of new life and new covenant, as our soloists sang, to come to the new Jerusalem, where all are invited and all are included and all share at the banquet table equally. I don't know about each of you, but I can never share a meal with anyone without remembering how on Monday Thursday, which means Commandment Thursday, Jesus invited his disciples and others who were gathered there to eat and to drink in remembrance of him. The commandment that he restated again during the Last Supper was to love one another as I have loved you. To love one another as I have loved you. And we know that Paul gathered in his house churches, like the one that Lydia served as hostess and patron, and Paul shared similar words as he invited all together at the table fellowship the table of Jesus, our brother, and our role model. Let us remember this the next time we are hosts and hostesses. Let us remember this the next time we work at the Tuesday night meal service. Is that at St. Paul's Methodist Church? Am I remembering that right? Or when we are in need, or when others are in need. If we haven't already, let us sit and talk with someone at the table, share a meal, and build a relationship. And then let's say, hey, I look forward to seeing you next time. I look forward to seeing you next time. To God be the glory. Blessings and amen.